Hello, future viewers. Today we have a couple of steps to take before we can get a boat. And I'm not sure that it's going to be safe on there either. We know how boats tend to uh, survive or not in Shining Force. Well. We have quite a few new enemies here. We have skeletons, we have a new mage, we have brass loaders, pegasus knights. Now, they're really throwing a lot of different stuff at us this time. Well, the skeletons aren't too much different from what we've been facing, and hey, we're starting to get new weapons as drops, so that's kind of a, a nice uh, holdover from book one. Now that, that particular uh, Hell Sniper had a range of three instead of two because it's also carrying an unusual weapon, but unlike the Skeleton, this one had the brains to equip it. And that's a little bit of a problem for us since it outranges us, but hey, May actually turned out to be useful for once. She acted as an arrow magnet and lured that guy out it right into the middle, so um, we were able to surround him and the rest was not a problem. As a bonus, thanks to a little bit of luck, the arrow went exactly to the person who I wanted to have it. And Graham is um, a little bit overpowered at this point. Quite a bit more attack power than everyone else. And for that reason, I have to show a little bit of restraint. Um, I had to split out the party a little bit because of enemies to the left and right, but once again, we were able to lure out the sniper. I think that one of the things about the AI that makes this game a little less interesting than it could be is that it doesn't really do formations. Like, it doesn't have archers hide behind uh, melee characters while it shoots at us. Same goes for mages. And we're starting to level past 10 now, so don't expect to see gains of more than one point at a time. But gaining uh, a lot of different stats, like... Uh, HP, MP, it still makes up for a decent total. Now, here I was a little afraid. I thought we might have to rush down that brass loader, which would also put us in range of uh, the other enemies, so things might get messy. But this brass loader decided to just go and roll on ahead of its support, and that, that made things a lot easier for me. So this happened. Well, despite having higher stats, the, the Brass Loaders are not that much more threatening than their Book 1 version. They still have a range of only two tiles. As for the Master Mage, well, it has Blaze 3, which is um, very, very menacing in the Game Gear version, less so here. In fact, uh, we can still persuade this, uh, this Master Mage to attack in melee, which... It's actually not that much uh, safer for us than Blaze 3 against one target because it's got a high level staff. Like, we do not have access to the staff that he's using right now. Um, still less damage than Blaze 3, though. And that's just about it. Come on, I know you can do it. So the reason that Blaze 3 and the other level 3 spells are more imposing than they were in Book 1 is that in the Game Gear version they had the same area effect as the higher level Bolt spells or Aura spells, so the formation I'm using would not be safe. But this is... So <laughs> I almost said Sonic. This is Shining Force CD, which has reverted those changes, because we can't have our mages be that good, I guess. Oh well. And then there's Freeze 3, which is its own essay, and I will get to that in due time. Well. More plot learning. Um... Prince Nick, uh, he led that uh, that force at the start of the map, which we kind of guessed would fail because the um, camera didn't follow him out, if as it were. Well, uh, I guess 
that's it for now. We'll finally get to capturing the boat next time. Later, everyone.